Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 19th, coming up on 10.45 a.m. here. Today we're going to talk about the next system out over the Pacific Ocean here for Thursday. It's already spreading warm front precipitation into portions of western Oregon. It's going to bring some snowfall to the higher terrain across the region. We'll look at that in a little bit of detail. Then we're going to take a look on into the extended, and we'll take a look at the rest of the country here briefly as well. So getting right into it here. You can see we got some lake effect snow going on coming off of Lake Michigan here. That's when the lake is warmer than the air above it and that air rises into that air, condenses, cools, and forms lake effect snow bands. You can see the winter weather advisory is associated with that. Some winter storm watches, uh, Carolinas and Southern Texas. So be aware if you uh, know anybody in those areas. We've got some wind chill um, warnings and advisories up in effect for the Northern states here. Check some of this out. North Dakota, negative 44. This is from the National Weather Service Bismarck, North Dakota page. So if you are traveling out there or you know anybody in those regions, uh, you know what they're going through there. So winter in North Dakota. We've got some severe weather going on today, possibly down here in Texas and Louisiana. Tornado potential too. So heads up there. Looking on into the temperatures for the Pacific Northwest. Now you can see that cold Arctic air mainly east of the Rockies here. Very cold. And you see that air kind of push off and get out of the region there, and it warms western Montana up. And you can see typical conditions for western Washington and Oregon, mid-40s, some getting up towards 50 in southwest Oregon there. But you can see all that cold air just hanging around still, as it tends to do in January for eastern Washington portions of eastern Oregon. And let's take a closer look now at Thursday's system. So this is this morning here. And you can see the next system swinging by through here. And as it does, when a system moves through with that kind of trajectory, a little bit of northwest flow behind it, I tend to watch for a convergence zone. So let's watch for that here coming up in some detail. And check out this ridge that builds up behind the system. Kind of flattens out a bit there next Monday. So maybe this system will clip us enough to clear things out a bit so we don't go with dense fog for too many days in a row. And then you'll see a stronger system Wednesday move just north of the region. This might bring a front through, so we'll have to watch for that. But this is a good sign the ridge not hanging out for that long. Then you can see another system moving through on the 28th. This is a little bit different than yesterday. The GFS is more bullish on bringing systems through the area. As you can see here, we get much more of a westerly flow here, jet stream much closer to the Pacific Northwest, possibility for wind storms or a change to colder weather with an outlook like that. So that's that's good. So here's some of that precip that's moving through this morning. You can see mainly Western Oregon areas, and then you see the bulk of the precip arrive tonight, very late tonight into Thursday morning. You see the frontal passage here and this is about 8 a.m. as that front passes. And there's a convergent zone signature. You can see it here. So when I see convergent zone signature like this, I look for something else. You see, it's a pretty progressive convergence. zone. see how it moves and slides past SeaTac there. When I see that, I start to wonder, hey, maybe we'll get a lightning strike somewhere in the Puget Sound. So something to look forward to there. Let's see what the wind pattern looks like. You can see it increasing with that system coming in here Thursday. Look at the winds pick up in eastern Washington coming through that gap there, that Snoqualmie Pass gap as it moves those west winds through there. Going to clean things out a little bit over there um, visibility-wise for any kind of stagnant air, at least up against the east slopes there. You can see if we zoom, if we narrow in on that here, 52 knots. That's over 55 miles per hour in some of those westerly winds. So heads up, that could be affecting some areas of I-90. This is Thursday afternoon mainly uh starts thursday morning though late morning and then goes into the afternoon and onto the evening so heads up there and you can see the convergence zone signature here behind this on thursday afternoon you see the westerlies coming down the strait and some southerlies wrapping around the olympic mountains here too and you can see that kind of shift south during the evening there and so we're going to watch for maybe a an isolated lightning strike in the convergence zone, the Puget Sound there. And this is convective available pot potential energy. This shows the possibility for some instability. Check this out. This is Thursday afternoon. Look at that. This is a uh, convergence zone signature here. Possible lightning strike anywhere from Everett, uh, north of Seattle to Everett. And this one, then you can see it progressively move down over Seattle and then south. It only takes a tiny bit of cape to get a lightning strike out of the convergence zone with all that forcing that goes on in those converging winds. So yeah, something to look forward to for Seattleites on, and this is tomorrow afternoon. 
So here's the snowfall potential. You can see this is Thursday, very early morning. Here you see the snow start to pile up over the Rockies, Bitterroots, and the Cascades. As the system slides by, not a big snowmaker, as you can see. There's some areas in here that might get six plus inches. Snoqualmie Pass, between Snoqualmie and Stevens Pass. Snoqualmie is probably just going to make out with, you know, like two to five inches or something with this event. Just a heads up if you're traveling eastbound out of Seattle. You can see eastern Washington remains mostly snow free, but there is some frozen precip as you get towards Spokane and Idaho here. So here is uh, here is wintry precipitation. I, I kind of lied a little bit there. I, I, I didn't mention the freezing rain. I, I, I said no snow, but there is a freezing rain potential, as you can see here, up against the east slopes of the Cascades. So this is for Thursday. So you know, slow down. Roads may be slick. I've been through a few ice storms over there in eastern Washington, and they can they can get pretty crazy. So looking at Portland, you can see not many advisories up now. The air, you know, we're not looking at a dense fog situation for the Willamette Valley currently. Medford, Oregon, looks like you guys must have cleared out a bit. Looks like on the east side, though, there's still air stagnation advisory going on. Light snow returns, and this is talking about the Thursday system. Potential impacts, wintry mix possible for the valleys and snow in the higher terrain. And looking at the six to 10 day outlook, you can still see we're looking at below average precipitation. This is the highlight of that ridge that is coming after this system tomorrow. And you can see the six to 10 day outlook, actually a little bit above temperature for the Western Washington and Oregon, a little bit below for Idaho regions there. Taking a look at the extended now, we're still getting this signal Pacific North American Oscillation, which means ridging over the Pacific Ocean, which allows North Flow to possibly bring Arctic air into our region. You guys have been hearing me say this over and over again, but the signals keep showing it. This was last night, the European run. If we look at GFS, also last night, again, showing the same thing with that Pacific North American Oscillation, that ridging that we need over the Pacific Ocean to bring down cold air. So if you're a snow lover, you like that. If not, you want this to go away, but that's what we're looking at for the extended. So I will have another briefing out tomorrow. We'll go over that convergence zone a bit more and we'll look at what kind of snow is gonna fall across Pacific Northwest. And again, like always, we'll take a look at that extended forecast and see if we're gonna still be looking at a possible change. The GFS, I like that. It looks a little bit more stormy versus having a big death ridge all the way to the end of January. So that is a bonus in my book. So I will talk to you guys later and stay tuned on Twitter if you want up to the date or up to the moment updates. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye.